Los Angeles wildfires. How did they start? How is it possible that there are four or five in different places? And especially, why have they been so uncontrollable? In the last few days, many of you have signed up asking for a video on the situation. We took a few days to do a first in death analysis and get a clearer picture of the situation. Before we begin, please allow me 10 seconds to think of everyone involved, especially the 16 people who sadly died in these fires. First, let's try to focus on the geographic location of these fires. This map, updated on January 12th, clearly shows four major fires in Los Angeles. There are actually five, but the fifth is much smaller. The first is Palisades, which is the largest fire currently active and the first to break out on Tuesday. It has already burned over 23,000 acres. Then there's the Eaton Fire, which is located in the northern part of Los Angeles and has affected areas like Altadena and the second largest fire in the area, in fact, has burned more than 5,600 hectares. A hectare is like a football field. The third is the Hearst one. It flared up on Tuesday night. It is located further north, actually northwest of the Hollywood Hills. It has reached 323 hectares. But as fortunately confirmed by the institutions, it has been contained by 76%. So let's say it is more under control, as is the fourth fire, the Kennet Fire. This one started Thursday on the border between Los Angeles and Ventura counties and has covered over 435 hectares. Authorities say its advance has been virtually stopped and that it is 90% contained with no damage or destruction to structures. Looking at the maps in more detail of the Palisades and Eaton areas, you can clearly see how many homes have been affected. Some images are truly incredible, like these satellite images. The fires are also clearly visible from Copernicus Sentinel, three which also shows the huge smoke trails generated. Everyone is wondering what is the reason for these fires in Los Angeles. The doubt of many is how it is possible that several fires broke out in several places at the same time. It's definitely arson. So let's start by saying one thing. At the moment, the trigger mechanisms of the fires are not known, and surely we will have to wait for the investigations to know something more. But it is interesting to know that in the area in the past some fires were actually intentional. Others were started by fires, lit by people, and then put out. Badly, but some, on the other hand, among the most devastating fires were caused by faults in the electrical line, as in the case of the Paradise Fire in 2018. So, jumping to conclusions based on simple logic alone is a mistake. What we do know is that these fires were triggered by a series of factors that contributed to their rapid spread and advance, as often happens with the most violent and devastating phenomena. There's not just one cause, but a series of causes, a mix of ingredients that generate a destructive cocktail. Ingredient number one, very dry soils. The drier the soil, the more ready it is to burn. You should know that this time of year is definitely unusual. Witnessing such devastating fires in Southern California, where fire season typically ends in October, as temperatures drop and humidity increases. There has been almost no rain in the area over the past few months. According to official data from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration for the Los Angeles area, but overall in Southern California, there was no precipitation from June to October 2024. Against the 24 millimeters predicted, on average, over the same period, in November there was 3.5 millimeters of precipitation against the expected average of 19 millimeters. In December, the 0.5 millimeters precipitation actually fell against an average of 71 millimeters. So the land, the vegetation was extremely dry. So let's say that the drier the soil and the vegetation are, the more it is as if there was gasoline, so to speak. Now, the wind issue is tied to a high pressure system over southern Idaho and a low pressure system over the coast. In the northern hemisphere, these systems cause winds to rotate clockwise. 
Southern California is in a position where these winds blow from east to west, so in the opposite direction to the usual winds. It happens that, descending from the heights of the Mojave Desert towards the Pacific coast, these winds, crossing the narrow mountain passes, they undergo compression and, as a result, heat up and become dry. They are known as Santa Ana winds and hit Southern California several times a year. What's the point? It's that in this case, the high pressure and low pressure were really strong. So if there are strong high pressure and low pressure, the wind will be very strong accordingly. In fact, the gusts reached impressive speeds, reaching up to 150 to 160 kilometers per hour in the San Gabriel Mountains. Wind on fires, what does it do? It does more or less what we do with charcoal. When we light charcoal for embers, we fan it to produce a current, a wind that feeds the flames so that all the charcoal ignites. Similarly, such strong winds not only feed the fires, providing more oxygen to the flames, but they also carry burning material more easily, which can obviously generate other fires in nearby areas. And then another thing, they literally bend the flames forward, thus allowing them to more easily set fire to the territory laterally. Westward propagation, we said that the winds blow from east to west. You can see it very well in this map of the Palisades fire. As you can see, from January 7th to January 9th, the fire has spread westward for over 10 kilometers. Third ingredient, insufficient water and water systems. The water available in a certain area, and this is a general comment, isn't infinite. Not only that, the entire water system was not designed to handle such a huge fire in the city. The words of Martin Adams, former director general of the Department of Water, are emblematic. The water system that supplies neighborhoods simply does not have the capacity to deliver such large volumes of water for multiple hours. The system was never designed to fight a community fire. Unfortunately, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are 16 victims at this moment. At the time we're shooting this video, about 180,000 displaced and over 10,000 structures, totally destroyed. The damage is even estimated to reach $150 billion. Thank you for following us to the end, and I'll see you next time, always here on Geopop, Everyday Science.